Hello and welcome to another Calamelson.com video. You join me at Ninoy Aquino International Airport as I'm about to travel back home to Europe on Singapore Airlines. I was here early so had a bit of waiting and waiting and waiting before check-in opened. My entire journey today consisted of this hop in business class to Singapore on an Airbus A350-900 followed in my next video with suite class on the A380 to Frankfurt and then to London City on BA City Flyer in plain old economy. Despite that final leg being on a separate ticket using British Airways Avios points, the super helpful agents at Naia were able to check my bags all the way to London and print off my boarding passes. Excellent top tier help from Singapore Airlines. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit like or drop a comment. Even your hate fueled ones are acceptable and ring that notification bell to be kept up to date with the latest vids. Or if you're a repeat viewer or subscriber, welcome home. Now back to the video and the ear. With three perfectly branded boarding passes in hand, I headed through the exit immigration and straight to the Silver Chris Lounge. It's a reasonable size to accommodate their premium passengers and those with Star Alliance gold status. The design will be familiar to those who have visited other SQ lounges across the globe. At the time of visiting, the lounge was approaching 8 years old with it showing signs of wear and tear but it's a decent place to spend time before your flight. Food consists of Filipino favourites like Kare Kare and Western options like sandwiches. Drinks are self-serve if you want your final hit of Royal True Orange, the Philippine version of Fanta which tastes and looks exactly the same. We soon headed for gate 111 in the crowded corridors of Terminal 3 for a very messy boarding procedure. The staff tried to maintain control, but many passengers were simply trying to board when it was not their time. Winding through more corridors to the jet bridge made me ponder that the capital of the Philippines could really do with a better product at this airport, especially compared to the far superior international terminal at Cebu Mactan. Welcome aboard this Singapore Airlines regional variation of the A350-900 with business laid out in a 1-2-1 configuration where I'm sat in seat 19K. This regional seat for flights up to around 4 hours is the same style that Turkish Airlines use on their latest long haul aircraft, which is to say that this is complete overkill for a flight of this length. At the seat were a pair of average noise cancelling headphones and a hefty menu for this hop. A gaggle of buttons to control the seat functions are to the right, along with a touchscreen remote that doesn't get nearly as hot as that on Golf Air from last week. Above this is a small surface for stuff, then a dedicated cubby for storage and power including international power outlet and USB-A ports. Lights can be controlled just above your head with three positions for various options. With a minor delay, as is very common at Naia, I headed to the bathroom. They're spacious, kept spotlessly clean and filled with amenities that you wouldn't usually get on shorter flights like this, including toothbrushes. Moisturizers, cologne and facial mists are produced by the upmarket British brand Penhaligon. I duly had a facial with the mist, feeling both pleasured and questioning what the whole point of this is at the same time. Soon enough, it was time to depart Manila as we waved the Qatar Airways Boeing 777 next to us goodbye, with the metropolis giving stunning views as we left the city.
With us now in the air, I sat down with Chris Weld, the airline's brilliant in-flight entertainment system. I'll do a full review of this in my next video as it's near enough the same, but the long and short of it is that it's one of the best systems on any airline. Not quite to the level of Emirates, but there's going to be something for almost everyone. The easiest way to control the screen is by using the mobile-like remote, select your program and watch ahead on the screen. I settled down to watch everything everywhere all at once, a truly excellent and exceptionally random film. Now onto the part of every Singapore Airlines review that is bound to excite, the food. We started by taking a look at the hefty and well-produced menu, which covers meals on both the Singapore to Manila and Manila to Singapore flights. The airline offers an extensive set of options, with four options for main course, astonishing for a flight of this length, while the rest of the menu consists of a wide array of drinks to select, with plenty explanation on the merits of each option. For the starter, we had one option, the cold poached salmon in Chardonnay with eggplant caviar. A fresh, light starter, it was a great way to begin the meal. This was served alongside a glass of Charles Hyde Six Champagne, the first of many on this long journey home that was chilled to perfection. The main was the flavorful Filipino dish braised beef kare kare, a peanut based sauce alongside rice and vegetables. While it could have done with a little more oomph, it was flavorful enough and represented a solid option for a meal. Some crackers and garlic bread were also provided. For dessert, we have the cappuccino gatto, which was followed by an illy cappuccino in drink form. While it will never compete with one made on the ground, the airline really made a good attempt and clearly used real espresso as part of it. With the meal now over, it was time to explore the seat a little more. The seat forms into a fully flat bed within a minute or so with a decent length at 200 centimeters, but the girth doesn't particularly impress me much. The bulkhead has a slightly larger cubby than other seats, but I think it might be a little constricted when sleeping, which shouldn't be too much of a problem on these short regional flights. Arms on both sides of the seat go up and down to give a little extra room when laying down, which is a thoughtful touch. Meanwhile, the headrest is adjustable up and down and on the winged sides. Singapore Airlines have opted for a three-point seat belt on this seat design. The upper part only needs to be worn during takeoff and landing though. And a rather plump pillow and blanket finishes off the seat features. Great amenities from SIA. I finished the flight by taking a read of the safety information card and then a good look at the slightly retro in-flight map. It performed the task reasonably well, but cannot be controlled or personalised in the way newer map systems can. While we come into land at Singapore Changi Airport, here's my verdict on the short haul wide body experience on Singapore Airlines. Simply put, they are great. Starting with the hard product, this is not the world's best business class, but it's simply not intended to be. However, it could easily be one of the best short haul regional business classes in the world, especially when compared to rivals such as Cafe Pacific and their equivalent regional business class being closer to a premium economy recliner. Food and drinks are high quality, even if the dishes themselves aren't always a winner. The selection of drinks for a short haul flight are simply amazing. Then there is the crew. Now you're always going to get variations with any company and their staff, but Singapore Airlines have some of the most consistent and professional crews out there. With Singaporean charm, beautiful uniforms, and a willingness to go in above and beyond for their passengers, they are the embodiment of what an excellent flight crew should be. This is exactly how my crew were on this flight today. Even down to the ground staff in Manila, their readiness to help and serve in an inquiry, such as checking baggage to a separate ticket, was excellent and isn't always a given with big airlines. But quality, as always, comes with a price. Adjusted for the amount of flying hours, this flight cost me approximately 56,000 Chris flyer miles and around $10 US in taxes. That's not entirely accurate because this was a connection to a long haul first flight pushing up the overall cost, but that is not the sheer best value you can get. 
You can get this flight for as little as 25,000 points with Alaska mileage plan if you are into this scheme. But in concert with the long haul first flight, which I'll be reviewing next week, this was an excellent flight and great value. I've since flown Singapore Airlines three times across business and economy with all the experiences being great, proving that they are really worth the money even if they are more expensive. That is probably the best conclusion you can make with any experience. It was good enough that you would do it again and pay good money to do so. I hope this small slice of Singapore in the sky has enticed you enough to come back next time when I fly and review one of the world's best first class and Singapore Airlines flagship product, Sweet Class, their first class product on the flying whale, the Airbus A380. You and I are simply in for a real treat. Thanks once again for watching the video. If you liked it, please do subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell and share with your mum or whoever else is in your life. See you next time. Ingat at salamat salahat sa inyo. Thank you. Bye-bye.